Okay, this is part two for the Patreon. Love, November 2021. Spirit, anything else that we need to know for the good people? Anything else that we need to know for the good people? Okay, something interesting that I heard today about the Three of Pentacles. This is Capricorn energy, by the way, so I wouldn't be surprised if something triggered this November that would lead to maybe even a rush hurry moving in with somebody uh, early in the new year, Capricorn season. Um, these architectural structures are... Um, basically microwave conductors uh they're they're magnetic conductors uh in form uh and structure and that provides free microwave energy um that's what i hear anyways so you could dive deep into that dig into that that's what that's about um anyways uh, what could I say? This is also the card for, for moving, uh, you know, relocating. Um, I guess the kind of connection that you can make with like the free kind of semiconductor energy is that, you know, you're really truly a magnet to, to, to the people and the energies and the frequencies in your life. You know, we had the devil card in reverse with the first reading. Um, you're leaving toxicity, low vibrations. It might be a reflection of your dietary choices, uh, you know, whether you're partaking in habits such as drinking or smoking or quitting that, that'll lift your vibration, meditation, prayer, exercise, adequate sleep, which I haven't had uh, this past night, so apologize if I seem kind of punchy. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just emphasis on that. Nothing that you don't know, probably. Uh, Queen of Pentacles in the upright, a lot of stability in the home front, warmth, um, Kind of coveting that home front, homestead nature, the Queen of Pentacles in the upright. Maybe someone who's kind and caring or able to finance you in relocating or support you in some way, shape, or form. That's going to have a lot to do with your with your love or romantic relationship. If you're in a relationship already or if you're looking for a relationship, Pentacles are on deck here. So the money's looking good, the relationship's looking good. It's not always a correlation, but it can't hurt. The Empress in the reverse is giving birth to something. She's mama of the tarot. She's always pregnant, so in the reverse, her legs are open. Out comes the baby. The baby's a metaphor for whatever you're giving birth to. It could be a new relationship, uh, come Taurus season. She's also, you know, represented by Libra season, which, again, we're in until uh, October 22nd, so... This is a nice, uh, steady gumbo here, stew, cooking, um, with an emphasis on value, resources, finances, uh, with the, with the pentacles there. So you're definitely backed, um, the resources could help facilitate travel, could help facilitate, you know, taking the next step to buying a home or moving in together, getting married, things of that nature, you know, it never hurts, it never hurts. Um... Venus is in Sagittarius, so this could be expanding education, having resources to do that, which is going to snowball to a better income, which is going to snowball to a better home, things of that nature. Venus in Sagittarius could be law, could be travel, could be foreign affairs, self-education, philosophy. could be a bunch of stuff, but it's in general a kind of a, a rough and rowdy, expansive energy, uh, inspired, inspired to take action, inspired to invest, inspired to reciprocate as well, inspired to make a move. <clears throat> invest in family, invest in having a child, you know, things of this nature as well. Moving on up to a bigger home that could fit a family. I could see that being kind of like a correlated uh, task with Sagittarius and, and this kind of home earthy energy here. Again, with the Queen of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, uh, and the Empress in reverse, obviously giving birth. So, something like that. 
Okay, why? Okay, so you might feel like there's a lack of communication here with the Eight of Rods in reverse and the Temperance card in the upright. Don't worry, things are being handled behind the scenes and divine timing. Okay, if you're being stretched out time wise, you're getting impatient, just know that everything is right on time always. You just got to tune into that fact. Yeah, don't harbor resentment for something not coming through on a timely basis. Maybe even even if it's someone proposing or, or asking to move in with you or having a child, things of that nature. Okay, don't get butthurt about you know someone not taking the next step. It's all going to be revealed in divine timing. You're encouraged to kind of just be here now, be present, wait and see. Get emotionally comfortable where you are. Not, And that doesn't mean physicality-wise, location-wise. It just means within yourself. Get comfortable in the here and now. Don't put off your happiness in the here and now for, oh, when I have kids, when I have a family, when I'm in my home, then I'll be happy, then I'll be enough, then I will have made it. No. Moon card is fourth house, kind of emotional comfort, security, creature comforts. That's right in the here and now. Okay, that's being in harmony with this gumbo soup here with all these items right here in the moon card. Um, that's available to you now. This is going to bring forth this kind of rushing income and victory here with the chariot card. Um, could be as early as next summer. This is Cancerian, Leo, and Virgo energy in that order. So that's beginning to the end of the summer. Where you could see a lot of this kind of uh, moving into a new home, relocation energy, taking the next big step. Um, finances on fleek, so a lot of expansion, travel. Okay, that Empress, you know, Uranus and Taurus, the unexpected, all related to family and living and, you know, cohabitating and, and all that stuff, resources. So um, don't be surprised if there's a big change that, that's kind of sparked. Uh, this November. Okay, guys, that's what I have for you. As always, reach out for one-on-one -on -one reading. Peace, love, and light to you.